Joining me now for a chat about the week in media and politics headlines is Colby Hall, the founding editor of Mediaite. Colby, how are you doing? Adrian, good to see you. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I want to talk about the story that dominated cable news this week, much to my chagrin because I really don't like this story. It's cheap fakes. Can you walk us through what cheap fakes are and why we are suddenly seeing that word every single cable news segment on every single network? I'll do my best. Cheap fakes um, sort of entered the political media lexicon when the Washington Post wrote a big sort of expose focusing on video footage that emerged from Biden at the G7 conference uh, surrounding a skydiving event uh, th that uh, some news outlets sort of edited unfairly make a geriatric and slow and stiff president look even more sort of out to lunch and thus spawned a debate on whether or not this was altered or manipulated or was misleading in any, any way, shape or form. Fox News has been singled out as a culprit here. They have taken this video in particular, and there's been a couple instances lately of this. There was one where Biden appeared to be reaching for a chair that was said to not be there. And then when you see the full footage, you see that there actually was a chair there. It just took him a long time to sit down on it. The one at the G7 was he was turning or he sort of wandered off from the other world leaders and gave a thumbs up to a parachutist. And in the original video, you couldn't see that he was actually addressing anyone. So it looked weirder. And I think at, at the through line here is that he's always behaving a little bit old and a little bit right. odd. But in certain camera angles, it looks even crazier. And that's what places like the New York Post have seized on. Fox News has been under attack from the White House are the claims against the network, as far as you can tell, fair? It's a, it's a tricky and nuanced story that everyone is somewhat kind of guilty of. Um, I, I'd say, you know, the, the Fox News makes a point that they've not aired any manipulated footage. In fact, the footage that they aired of the G7 event was the pool feed that the White House released themselves. Um, I think the criticism that Fox News has received, and it's fair criticism, is that they've misled, they've misreported, they've misled viewers into saying that Biden, Sean Hannity said this, Jesse Waters said this, uh, Janine Pirro, Fox and Friends, basically made the case that he didn't know where he was and he just wandered off. When if you look at another feed or another shot, it's clear that he's he knows what he's doing. He's very intentionally approaching a group of. A, parachutists who just landed. The real guilty party here is RNC Research. They're the, they're the genesis of this and the, and the Normandy footage uh, where uh, Biden was sort of caught mid-seating and that was cut right before he pulled up his chair. So yes, Fox News has deserved some criticism. I think some of it is unfair because they haven't aired any fake video. President Trump has misspoke a ton also. He just wings it and improvises and says a lot of dumb stuff that is intentionally comedic. The Hannibal Lecter thing, like he's just sort of making fun of this great character, like what a great dude that was. He's not saying that Hannibal Lecter was a real person or lauding the fact that he was a serial killer. He's just messing around with the audience and he's joking and people make a lot of hay out of that. There's way more reasons to be concerned about uh, former President Trump than and making a dumb Hannibal Lecter joke or forgetting the name of Ronnie Jackson, which he called Ronnie Johnson. So, I mean, both these dudes are old and neither as sharp as we should have as candidates for the coming election. That's the gerontocracy is a more serious conversation that we should be having. Right. I see people sometimes argue that to really appreciate how with it Biden is, you have to watch full interviews that he does. The problem with that is that it's an extraordinary expectation for people who don't spend much time following politics, I, as in the majority of Americans. Not to mention, let's say you accept the context that the, these snippets are the worst of his behavior, they still exist. The full context right. doesn't do much to help the case that Biden is not a normal age. And well, so no, I mean, I th isn't this just something that happens every campaign where there are the worst of each candidate is highlighted by their opponents? I, I mean, it... I think it speaks to the importance of confirmation bias. If you, if you are convinced that, like a lot of people on the right are convinced that Biden isn't just slow and old, but he's senile and decrepit, though none of these people are doctors, uh, you'll see these and it's, it confirms your, your conclusion. It's a Rorschach test. But if you, you think he's a 
you know, sort of kind hearted, slow, older grandpa figure that is still with it behind closed doors and, and in law. Well, then you're going to be way more forgiving. And so I, I think the digital age and these these smaller clips just lend itself to be confirmed. I will say the other thing to your point. We don't see long form interviews with Biden almost ever. Like the other part to this that sort of lends credibility to that confirmation bias is that he doesn't do press conferences. He doesn't really, he'll take a couple questions, two and twos with foreign leaders. He doesn't sit down for long form interviews. Um, why? You know, if he's so sharp in long form interviews and behind closed doors, we should see that. Now, of course, the debate next week will be <laughs> the. And so now we're seeing an expectations game of like, oh, will he benefit from the low expectations? My last question, you had a column this week that created some buzz. You argued that MSNBC, which has been on the defense against these Biden videos all week, has a tight relationship with the Biden White House that is reminiscent of the symbiotic relationship that we saw between Fox News and Trump. Fox News got a lot of heat from media critics for that relationship. MSNBC isn't getting any. But could you explain the argument that you made for us? Well, yeah, I, I think basically MSNBC is sort of getting a pass here. And by, by, I, by no means do I think MSNBC and Fox News are in the same canon. MSNBC is far more committed to the truth than Fox News. You could argue that Fox News is way more effective at what they do in terms of like propagandizing sort of rhetoric for the, the Republican side of the army. MSNBC just never has a, a voice that is ever critical of this administration. In fact, they, they often run to defend. And, you know, Joe Scarborough, who's probably their most notable and influential host, he speaks to Biden regularly uh, by his own and Biden's own admission. Um, when Sean Hannity had that sort of relationship with Trump, everyone was up in arms. Jen Psaki, who was a world class press secretary, she hosts a show now on MSNBC and will interview Biden campaign officials in what feels like just an amplification of a campaign ad. So I don't think MSNBC is anywhere as bad as Fox. I just feel like we should be somewhat consistent with our level of criticism of holding them accountable because I do believe that it, it serves their viewers and the body politic if there's a if there's a more honest conversation and not just running interference for, you know, the, the executive branch, as it were. Thanks so much for joining me, Colby. I really appreciate it. Thanks, dude.